الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إن خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في أنا glory dignity might عزة history proves without any shadow of a doubt that this great nation the nation of Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim ibn Abdul Munaf Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this great nation were the sole possessors of the Izzah of might, of glory, of honor, they reached this position to its highest pinnacle. And history proves without any shadow of a doubt that the early generations of Islam moved from success to success and attained the highest peak of honor and glory. Now the question is, why was this possible? Why did they reach this level of Islam? What made this happen? The early generation, they realized and recognized whom they were. The early Muslims, they believed with true belief, with true Iman in the Aqidah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they, they knew Tawheed, they understood Tawheed, and they lived Tawheed, knowing that every second of their life, is in continuous guidance and control of Allah Allahu Akbar. You all know Umar ibn Khattab. Anyone that does not know Umar cannot be in reality a true Muslim. Because Umar has many great paradigms, examples for us all in order for us to understand how to be good Muslims. How to be good Muslims in a way that Allah wants us to be. He was a great example for every Muslim who wanted to see the Izzah, the honor and glory of Islam. He exemplified honor to its highest peak. In the early days of Islam, we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to preach Islam in secret. Was it not? How many, how many years was that? 
How many years did he preach and stand secrecy? In secrecy. How many years? Three years. Three years. Why? Due to the pagan oppression. But when Omar entered this land, this mountain of knowledge, this mountain of faith, this mountain of courage, when he entered Islam, the minute, not the hour, the minute, he embraced the declaration of salvation, the testimony of Jannah, and he was in one of the secret meetings of Rasulullah He said, Ya yeah, Rasulullah, why are we hiding like this? Are we not right? Ya yeah, Rasulullah, is Islam not the truth? The reply was what? Yes. Yeah. Another question came immediately after this. Ya yeah, Rasulullah, are they not run? Those pagans? The idol worshipping? The shirk? Is that not run? The answer was yes. So I'm like, ah. So why are we hiding? Why are we hiding this beautiful flower? This beautiful deen? And subhanAllah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, What should we do, ya? He said, Rasulullah asking Umar as to what they should do. So you get advice from Umar. What did he say? He said, Ya Rasulullah, let us walk outside from this inconspicuousness, this concealment, walk outside, raise our arms, go around the Kaaba, and yell, Allah So everyone can see the beauty of Islam. And did they do this? That was the first time they exposed Islam in reality to the why was this? Because Omar knew the Issa of La ilaha illallah, the importance and the honor and glory of exposing and not hiding your true reality, your true Iman, this beautiful thing. When he was traveling to Syria in the company of Abu Ubaidah, Omar and Abu Ubaidah were traveling on their mounts to where? Syria. They reached a fort. A fort is a shallow part of a river. So Umar came off his mount, removed his shoes, and started crossing the, the river. So Abu Ubaidah startled, astonished, flabbergasted. He said, Ya Umar, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, O Commander of the Faith, you are doing this? I do not wish that the village people see you in this scenario, in this image. And what did Umar say to him? Yes, quickly get me the horse and carry me. Why? Because he knew that I see all this man. So what did he say? He retorted, Abu, Abu who? Obeyed him. In other words, he replied, responded extremely harsh, staunch behavior. Saying, Ya Abu Ubaidah, had anyone said what you just said, I would make him an example for all the Muslims. And we know I'm going to do it, but he was known to me. Say, ain't safe. He was common to us, but not to his fellow brothers and sisters. Listen to what he said after this one. This is where the important part. And never ever forget this. Let it engrave your souls, penetrate your heart, and live by this statement of Amr. He said, Jahaba Ubaida. We were the lowest of people, pagans. Idol worshippers, kufr upon kufr, shirk upon shirk, and then Allah blessed us, honored us, gave us glory and dignity by Islam. Whoever is it? Whoever 
seeks is honor and glory in other than Islam, Allah will debase him. Allah will defame him, humiliate him, belittle him, discourage him. When is this? When? When will Allah defame him? When? You seek honor in other than Islam. Brothers and sisters, Allah Ta'ala, our Creator, He does not want us to humiliate ourselves. He does not want us to be into ourselves. He does not want us to be weakened. He wants us to remain strong, firm, patient, courageous, firm on the path of righteousness, patient in the face of adversity, and not waver. Our strength was not in his muscles, no. Nor was his strength in his wealth. Nor was his strength in his lineage, nor in the number of children he has, nor how many degrees he has. No, no. It was the strength of taqwa, the strength of iman. It was the strength of firmness, patience, wisdom, standing firm on the path. And not wavering or watering or diluting his iman due to the worthless pleasures of this dunya, of this slow, deceiving, materialistic world. As we see many of our brothers and sisters falling into today. <coughs> this is where the strength is. The strength is in the Rizya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The strength is in Islam and no other. The strength is upholding the hut, not watering it with ethanol. No, but to uphold the hut, to be strong, to be firm, and not waver due to worldly pressure. This is the hut, this is the strength of Ahmad ibn Khattar and of Islam. When he was traveling to, to Medina, and we all know that the companions, Radiallahu they traveled to Medina in secrecy, you could say. Correct? In secrecy. The majority. But did Umar ibn Khattab do this? Did Umar ibn Khattab hide, conceal, flee? No. He wore his armor, he circumambulated the Kaaba. Prayed behind the Abrahamic station to the path, and then he propagated out now, proclaimed with a very powerful voice to who? To the chiefs of the pagans. Saying, Now I am migrating to Medina. Whosoever desires that his mother becomes bereaved for him, or his children become orphans, or his wife a widow, follow me. Follow me behind the back. 